the main theme for Frog Week 2023 is that this conservation project is ongoing and it's fluid, meaning we could continue to visit the same location time after time after time, and that's exactly what we were doing late May through mid-June. As you can see, the American toads made their reappearance to the pond to do something that they've only ever done once before, and that's reproduced for the second time in the same year at our pond. After five years of doing this conservation project, I can say I've only ever seen this once. I believe it was in 2020, whenever the American toads came back to the pond to reproduce. Of course, you guys know how biased I am towards these animals. They're my favorite animal thanks to Ace, and it's always an incredible opportunity. To sit back, relax at the pond and see these animals. I'm sorry to report that this American bullfrog who my mom calls Mr. Frog has passed away after the events of episode 6. We think he had a neurological problem. Something must have happened after brumation. So we want to say rest in peace to our dear friend Mr. Bullfrog here. And just as life is taken, life is also given. Here, the American toad tadpoles, after the first round of the breeding season, are in full swing and you could see them developing nicely and also you could see an American toad hanging out with them. This is truly one of the most exciting scenes. I get to show you the tadpoles of the American toad and the adult American toad. There's nothing like seeing both of the life stages side by side. Now this guy was actually trying to get out and I wanted to make sure I got some footage of him before I let him go on his way. But of course, I was going to help this guy. Arguably, one of the most important gadgets that we've incorporated into Frog Week this year is the Ambient Weather Network's Ambient Weather Station. We're able to understand all of the different things happening in the various locations that we've been monitoring and doing the Frog Week Conservation Program. As you can see it here, we're able to monitor all these different variables, sunlight, highs, lows, and rainfall. Rainfall was the most important variable for the Frog Week project this year because we actually were in an unprecedented drought having 20 days without rain. Of course you could see here the vernal pools were no match for what was happening with Mother Nature. And one of the saddest situations happened even though this happens every year at every vernal pool. I was a little bit late getting to this one and you can see here some toad tadpoles had sadly died. They had baked in the sun and I was unable to save these guys. It's a true reminder that time is limited and everything is of the utmost urgency whenever you're dealing with the breeding season. So rest in peace to these baby tadpoles. And this was a quick reminder for me that my work was necessary and it was something that was important. the PA Woods and Forest table. So why don't you guys tell us a little bit about PA Woods and Forest. Uh, you gotta talk loud. Yeah. It's a non- Louder. <laughs> it's a non-profit. Uh, PA Woods and Forest, uh, we know in your backyard there's some interesting overlooked species of frogs, even snakes, snails, uh, all kinds of things. So we're a nonprofit that looks into and promotes all these overlooked species that are actually very important in our backyard environment and the environment in Pennsylvania at large. Alright, what do I need to know about PA Woods and Forest? Huh? I don't know. What, what is this? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what am I at? What table is this? Well, what do you guys do? Focus on the conservation and education of native frogs and toads that live in your backyard. 
Yeah? Then why do you have snails and pitcher plants and stuff on the table? Because they're important too, and they're native to our area. Do you guys focus on them too? Yes. Oh, okay. Especially snails, that's our motto. Go slow and enjoy the food. <laughs> Somebody murdered my cricket. Hi, Mike Hammers. I'm the president of Lorraine Sandy Creek Hiking Trails. We are here at Lorraine Borough Veterans Memorial Park. Today is our Beer, Wine, and Spirits Festival with the Clarks. So we have all day of breweries, wineries, distilleries, and other uh, adult beverage vendors from the local area. A bunch of bands, food trucks, and regular vendors coming out here today. This is our biggest fundraiser of the year. This is what helps keep our nonprofit afloat for the whole year. So uh, coming out here and helping support us is a big deal, and we really appreciate everyone that comes out. I want to give a special shout out to Mike Hammers and everybody at the Lorraine Stony Creek Hiking Trails. Thank you for including us in your event and we support you guys wholeheartedly and 100%. Please check out those guys if you want to see some cool hiking trails in the Johnstown area. Life was continuing to go on after the death of Mr. Frog and all of the American toads were still here to reproduce. Oh, that's a nice looking toad too. It appeared that after the American toads had re-emerged for round two, the bullfrogs were not targeting them as their prey items. For whatever reason, a couple weeks made a big difference for this female American bullfrog. Something that I look forward to every year is to find the gray tree frogs in Somerset. I struck out, I was 0 for 3 for trying to find them. But just then, Esperanza started calling in the evening and I realized maybe I should go and see if he's right. What if Esperanza's calling and the other gray tree frogs out in the wild are calling? That's exactly what happened. Esperanza was 1 and 0 at this point. Talk about having an ace up my sleeve, and no I don't mean ace my American toad, I mean having Esperanza giving away the activity of the eastern gray tree frogs that were probably about two hours away from where he was located in the wild. For him to be calling and still be in tune after two months of being in captivity show you that these animals are a lot more in tune with nature than what we like to give them credit for. But here we get a chance to see the first wild eastern gray tree frog at this new location. And this is significant because this is a new type of habitat that I'd ever found them in before. It will give you a wide angle perspective. And we'll show you the king of the rock right now. This is the very first location, the top of the mountain, where the wood frogs go crazy every year. This is the first time I've ever seen American toads trying to reproduce in the same vernal pools. But sadly, the result of the wood frogs, either some of them escaped and metamorphosis and got out, or they all died. I wasn't able to come up here because of road work happening in the area, so I have no report for what actually happened to the hundreds of thousands of wood frog tadpoles. But what I can tell you, in wood frogless vernal pools, these American toads were taking advantage of their opportunity. It was their vernal pool to lose. And we have some of the most exciting 
and some of the most cinematic footage that I've been able to capture this year of the American Toads for Frog Week. This isn't their second round, this is actually the first round of these American Toads reproducing. Just have a look at those egg spirals. It was truly exciting to see that action was picking up. We were here at the right place at the right time. And these American toads were not going to disappoint us. Females were in the area and reproducing, but we were going to see some incredible action of these bachelors. They were all getting ready to start throwing down, start wrestling and fighting, and try to jockey for position so that way they could be next in line to get a mate. And that's exactly what was about to take place. As I was there, I could start to feel the tension rising, and these American toads were starting to get more intense every second. They were starting to wrestle deeper in the water, right at the marginal areas, and the stage was getting set for one of the most important battles that I could showcase for the Frog Week 2023 season. These males were not backing down from each other, and even though whenever frogs and toads wrestle, it really doesn't hurt the other animal, it's still incredible to see. This is one of the things that gets me the most excited every year, and we're getting ready to see one of the most epic toad wrestling matches in Frog Week 2023. guys doing? I always enjoy trying to make the toad wrestling matches more dramatic than what they are just because to me being out there and being so affectionate towards these animals it means a lot to me to see when the stakes are high that everything matters and these toads take it that serious. You are a beautiful green frog. Okay come here girl. This is definitely a female. Look how calm she is. I need to Examine her. I think she's gravid. That's why she's not moving Let's just make sure she's healthy You okay? Look you have a pond Look you're at a pond with other green frogs. What do you think about that? You hear them calling Just want to make sure you're okay Look at that face. You can hear them. I'm hoping that she'll hop down there. It's not that far away, but we saved a green frog, guys. We did a good thing here tonight. Look at how big she is. She could be gravid, that's why she's so slow. 
which means that if I come back here and I don't know another day or two with how these males are up here calling we might actually see perfect all right on cue we might actually see her eggs it really really looks like she is gravid because of how slow she's moving and how she just doesn't really want to be touched she's just really slow perfect night for the green frogs up here I wanted to test whether or not Esperanza was truly in tune with these gray tree frogs or if he just happened to get lucky that one night. And I came down here to Somerset County to see if the gray tree frogs were out and once again Esperanza was correct. They were active. Now he's 2-0. I really learned a lot from Esperanza, like how to play the artificial call so that way I could get better callback, and he taught me that as I was playing around and trying to stimulate him in captivity. It's truly incredible to see this population of eastern gray tree frogs that we thought had been declining was actually one of the healthiest populations that I've ever come across. One of the most important things that I don't want to get lost during this period of time was from June 14th all the way until the 4th of July, we got nothing but rain. And that's exactly why these gray tree frogs and those American toads at the top of the mountain were active and out. What's up guys? I'm just out here enjoying the weather at a festival, an outdoor day for PA Woods and Forests. We were invited and I have with me some wood frog tadpoles. Here's a chance to see them. You know where they've come from if you have been following the Frog Week project. For the first time ever in this channel's history, we're going to have a cliffhanger. So you're gonna have to come back and see what part two of the conclusion of Frog Week 2023 has in store. We're gonna see the results of the second round of the breeding season, go back to Potter County, and we're going to conclude Frog Week 2023. I hope that you'll join us for the finale in part two of this episode. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and share for more Frog Week content. We'll see you in the conclusion. Thanks, guys.